In this episode, entitled Down the Rabbit Hole, Jim Parker discusses his own work. This is the 11th and final video in the series that goes along with Jim Parker's book, Generative Art, Algorithms as Artistic Tool. Generative art is about using a description of your artwork as a basis for a computer to do a rendering. In other words, um, it's about using an algorithm to define a picture and then making that picture real. Um, computers are very precise and uh, most artists are less precise. So it's a, it's a wrestling match in some sense with what the computer is designed to do and what the artist wants it to do, but it can be accomplished with a great degree of patience and a great degree, degree of, of describing the picture. Artists don't tend to describe pictures. They don't tend to design as much as they intuit. So when you're, an artist is going to paint or draw, they start with a pencil mark on a piece of paper. A generative artist cannot do that. A generative artists must have a complete picture in their heads before they start on the computer. One of the advantages, though, is if you don't like what the computer does, if you don't like the rendering, you can change it ever so slightly and make it more what you want without redrawing the whole thing. In other words, the creative part of the artwork is the algorithm, and algorithms are relatively easy to change, and this makes the development of interesting generative artworks relatively simple and a, a process of repeating after small modifications. In the book, there is a section of color images, illustrations, and artworks. Here you will find, for example, illustrations describing alpha transparency and color hue spaces. There is also a generative art gallery with works by Jim, including Ellipsis, Quora, and The Woman in the Burgundy Bikini, and by Sarah Diamond, who wrote the foreword, and by Steve DePaola, our cover artist. In the final chapter, we actually make some artworks. Now, of course, I've made them. You haven't made them. But I go through a process for a number of different artworks showing how to use the techniques in the book to create the more complicated works. Some of them are very abstract. Some of them are based on original photographs and manipulate those photographs in interesting ways. And some are based on motion. So uh, the final example is based on the motion of a woman and we adapt those individual scenes, extract her from each scene, place her in a uh, background, and do things with the pixels in the image. So these are simply a col small collection of examples. I'm not trying to limit what you can do. Obviously, generative art is all about your imagination and how to create a description of what you want to do and not limit that by what the computer allows you to do. What this book has really done is to show you how to use the computer to do what you want, not what the software wants. And if you can create your own software, then you're not limited by what someone else's imagination is. Thank you for watching this video podcast series. The book, Generative Art, Algorithms as Artistic Tool, is published by Dervile and Uproot Books. Video production on this series is by Pepper Ranch Studio, Millerville, Alberta. Direction and voiceovers by Laureen Sheba.